Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, so happy to be here with you today. Thanks for joining us. I am Anna with Infinite Campus. Some of you have probably met me before, uh, but I'll be going through, as she mentioned, we'll go through the, the new things that teachers have available to them now. So let me go ahead and take control here and share my screen. So give me just one second. All right, so we're going to talk about the update specifically to campus instruction for uh, version 21-28 and a couple of areas that we're going to cover the new control center options and as uh, she mentioned the there will no longer be an option to turn on or off that new control center it's just there and then also there have been some updates to the assignments area so those are the two areas that we'll be looking at the first one we're going to take a look at is the control center. So it's going to be just on in that new look. They won't have the toggle any longer. There are some new features within, <coughs> within the, um, the new control center. They can define their own settings. They, there is an updated look for the attendance icon. There's a new assignments icon, but all those still function the same way, just a new look. And then there is a new option for student questions. This one will require a tool right change. If you want the teachers to have the ability to turn on the student questions, you will need to give them a tool right for that. So first of all, we'll take a look at this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in as a teacher. <clears throat> couple of things I want to point out right away as I log in. So because I have turned on the tool right for the questions functionality, what this will allow is a student to actually ask the teacher a question through the student portal. And I'll be showing you what that looks like. So once you turn that on, they are going to get this pop up. They can click don't show me this again. And then that way that won't pop up every time that they go in. Now the control center, as we said, there's no longer the toggle up here, but I do want to clarify, we kind of have two things going on right now with the new look. So this was the teacher control center new look, or is the control center new look, but we also have the new look of the product. So if you have it enabled for your teachers in their person up here in the upper right, they're gonna have the try new look option a couple of things I want to point out about this for teachers. I actually would recommend it. Your teachers most often will have access to other things besides instruction. So they'll have access to basic information under your students. So right now I'm in the old look of campus and this is separate from this control center look. And you know currently if they want to go back to campus tools, they have to switch here. It takes them back to campus tools, then they have to come here and they have to jump back and forth. So the Anna, new look of campus, which is much different. I mean, Anna, simple. we're still seeing the PowerPoint. Oh, 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 thank you. Uh, let me reshare. I was hoping someone would say something if it wasn't the right thing. So hold on one second. I thought I shared my screen, but I guess just picked up that one thing. Okay. Good to know, I'll have to reshare when I switch. All right, now you should be seeing campus. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so I'll, I'll back up. Um, I was pointing out this option up here in the person. This is where you would turn on the new look at for, so this again is separate from the new look we forced on the control center. So this is the new look of the product like admins would see as well. But for teachers right now, if they have access to anything in campus tools, they have to jump back and forth. They go here, then they have to come back to the app switcher and switch back. So a little bit of a task that they have to do there. If the teachers turn on the new look and in your system admin preferences, you have the option to turn that on just for teachers or for everyone. So if I turn on the new look, now they get one menu that has everything they have tool rights to. So here's all their instruction items. Then if they have anything in student information or anywhere else, it's all here in one place and they don't have to jump back and forth. So if they want to go to student information, they can go there, do what they want to do, and they're still able to come right here to instruction. So it makes the navigation for teachers 
a lot easier. So that one is still an option for them to go back and forth. Um, that will eventually be, not be an option, but I think we're still a little ways out on that. So this Anna, one, yep. Can I ask you, I'm sorry, this is Edie. Can I ask you a quick question? Because we're taking 2128 tonight. Right. And our understanding was that some of this ability to go back and forth for teachers changed with 2128. Has that changed? This is 2128 that I'm showing right now. Okay, so we're still able to turn it off for teachers? Well, the control center part, you can't turn that on or off. That is, okay. that right. is the way it is. But the other, the new look, the new look of campus, which also impacts the admin side of things, that part is still able to be turned on and off. And it will okay, be perfect. Off. But the, the thank you for the center, clarity. Yeah, because the control center had a toggle as well. It was up here in the upper right hand corner that they could look at the newer old control center. That is what's gone. <clears throat> Okay. okay, I just want to make sure everybody was clear on what they still would be able to do and not be able to do. Yep. Good question. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, so I am now here in um, the new control center. And notice I have a few different things here. The first thing I want to point out is the settings option that you see here at the top right hand corner. This is just a fun thing, I think, and it could help teachers uh, identify a little bit better. Everything has the same picture. It's got the same name. So if I click on the settings, one thing I can do is update my class name. So let's say I want to name this English 11 period three. Then I can also enable this student questions option if you've turned on the tool right. So notice how on this section I have the little hand, but on these I don't. So you can enable this per section. So I've enabled it for this section, but I haven't enabled it for the others. I can also change my icon. So if I wanted to change this to a book, for example, and maybe I want to turn it red, I can click save. And now I have customized what that section looks like for me. So it's just a visual, but I could do that for each section. And each section would would be different based on how I've set it up. So I could make these blue. And if I want to enable that student questions, I can do that. So I didn't rename this one, but you can see how easy that would be. So just a couple of cool features there that teachers can utilize. But the main thing is that student questions option. If they want the ability to do that, that is turned on in the settings once you've given tool rights. Attendance, the icon looks different, but attendance is the same. Everything here is exactly as it was. Nothing has changed. They can still click the student's name and get information, just like they have been able to previously. Um, they can still click present absent target. So all of that, nothing has changed there at all. Okay. And then assignments, this was here too. It was called, I think it was called something different, maybe score assignments, but it's still the same thing. It's just a, a different icon. And so here's an assignment that I need to score. All of this works exactly the same way as it did previously. Okay. Just a different icon. <clears throat> so then this is the new one. So if there were any student questions, and I'm going to put one in here in just a moment so you can see what it looks like. But right now there are no questions to display. So give me one moment. I'm going to go in as a student here. Let me bring up. And I guess I'll have to reshare. So because I'm guessing you probably didn't see me change screens. So let me try that again. I'm sharing my screen, so I don't know why it's not picking that up. OK, so here is the student view. So on their today view from the student portal. So I'm logged in as this student Shayla. Notice this is her class and right over here to the right, you can see the question hand. They will only have that if that has been enabled. I can click ask question and then it says you can ask one question at a time for each class you are enrolled in. You are enrolled in. Anna, we've got a question on if you change the, the teacher changes the name of the course for control center, the way it shows in control center, does that have any effect for anybody else? Transcripts, report cards? No, it's just a view for the teacher. That's a great question. It does not impact anything anywhere else. Uh, your course name still stays the same. 
uh, in the admin side of things. This is just a view for the teacher. That's it. Good question. OK, so as a student, I have asked a question. I'm typing that in. I'm going to click raise hand. OK, when I click raise hand, it turns red on my side. So I'll go back and I'll probably have to reshare, I'm guessing. Tell me if my screens are changing, but I'm guessing they're not based on earlier. We're seeing campus still. But you're not seeing the new thing I've shared. All right, let me. If you present your entire monitor, you ought to be able to switch between them. Well, that's what I'm doing, but it apparently sure. wasn't doing that. So, all right, so now I'm back in as the teacher. <clears throat> and notice um, that it didn't turn red. <laughs> It was supposed to. All right, so let me see. Let me see if I did something. Let me log off as the teacher and log back in. Now, you know, when I practice this, it worked perfectly. Of course, now it is. So I guess I had to log out and log back in. I guess the teacher would probably have to refresh the screen. <clears throat> so I just logged out and logged back in. But if they had navigated somewhere else and came back, it would be the same effect. OK, so it's red for this class, meaning that someone has asked me a question. So I'll click on that. Here's the question from my student. I can reply to the question. Whatever that might be, and then I hit reply. And that clears out my side of things. And now if I go back to the student, so I'm going to try this again. Could one of you let me know? Are you seeing my new screen that I just drug in to view? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. So it is working right. All right, great. Um, so now I'm back as the student. I'm going to refresh the student view here just by clicking away. And now notice that the student has a green computer icon. So I can click on that. And then I can see the reply from the teacher. I can ask another question or I can resolve it. Okay. And then on my side, it looks like I have, everything is done. And then I go back to the teacher side. I'll just refresh the view here. Anna, and can you show again how they activate the questions? How the teacher chooses to turn it on and maybe where it is in um, cool. tool okay. right in a minute. Okay, I can do that. So the teacher turns it on here in settings for each section. So if I go into the settings of this particular section of English 11, it's right here at the top, enable student questions. So this is how the teacher turns it on once you've given the tool right. Now the tool right, let me just log off here and I'll log in as an admin. Um, and I'm in the new look here of campus. Um, if you're in the, I'll go back to the old look, which is probably what most of you are in. In the old look, if I go to my tool rights, I'll just go to the, have a teacher's group. So in tool rights, it will be under the campus instruction tools, of course. And then under campus instruction tools. Um, oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. I there was two things to this. I'm sorry. I misspoke. The I'm glad you asked me to do this. So the tool, it's not a tool, right? I'm so sorry. I was thinking there was a tool right and a portal setting. It's not a tool, right? It's a portal setting. My apologies. This is brand new, so I'm learning too. Um, just making sure because I really did think there was a tool right. I thought I missed that. All right, so it's not the tool right, it's the portal setting. So, kind of odd though that a little bit different functionality than what you would normally see. You would normally expect it to be a tool right, which is what was in my brain, but there is a portal setting. So, if I go to portal preferences for the school, you know, these are school specific. So, under the portal settings, there is a student questions on campus student under other tools. So if you turn it on here, then that's what makes it available for the teacher to turn it on in their settings. So it's not technically a tool right. It's the tool right for portal that turns it on. So I must clarify that for you. So portal preferences for each school student questions on campus student. Once you have it turned on here, then the teacher will have the option 
to turn on that in their settings for each section. Does that clarify that for everyone? Okay. Right, I will log off and go back on as the teacher. Okay, so that's everything here on the control center as far as the new things. Here, are there any other questions regarding the options for the control center? We'll also ask um, how to change the settings rights to combine the screen so they don't have to toggle back and forth. I believe they're just talking about turning on new look. Yep. So that's up here in the upper right hand corner in the person. So right now I have the new look on. It, here's the toggle switch. Try the new look. And as long as that's on so right now it's off i just turned it off so if they have instruct this is how you know the difference without looking at the toggle if they have the little hat with instruction and the drop down this is the old look so if they go here to the person and click try new look then they're going to have these three icons the main menu the favorites and their recent tools and then they'll see everything they have access to now, I mentioned where you do that. I, I guess it would probably be helpful for me to show you that too. So if you go back to the admin side of things and we go into system admin, system preferences, so preferences, system preferences, down at the very, very bottom, you have an option here, user access to the new look of campus. You can, and this is just giving them the ability to click that toggle. So right now I have mine set to all users. So that means anyone, teachers and everyone can use the toggle. If I have it just set to only instruction users, then only teachers that have campus instruction tool rights will be able to change it. Or I can set it to no. I'm going to really encourage all of you. I've been training this since last fall and it is it is different. The new look is different. There are a lot of enhancements with it though and it will eventually be all you have. I think we're still probably out maybe towards the end of um, maybe even next school year before we might before it might completely be there. I don't have a definite date on that, but that's when I asked that's kind of where where we're at kind of a year out. So it's still a while, but I think it's something you should turn on potentially and give people the opportunity to switch back and forth. Because as you see, it's pretty easy to switch back and forth. Uh, there are still some things that very few, but for teachers, everything they would need is available in the new look. For admins, there are a few things. Um, there's a couple of things in tool rights, uh, like data health check is not available in the new look. So there's a few things here and there. There's a few things with searches that are being updated. There's a pretty significant update to the new look coming in August. So if you've looked at it, or at least we're putting it out in August, if you've looked at it and not really, you know, super comfortable with it, I think it's something you should try to start at least getting used to um, so that it's not a surprise when it comes. But uh, definitely take a look after those other updates come out in August to some of the things that were not working as expected are being fixed there. So, and we have yeah. another question. Um, yeah. Questions are only in the student portal. In other words, can parents get to those questions? No. Or is it just no, it's, it's just for the students. Yep. Thank you. That's my understanding as of now. That may change, but as it is today, that's the way that it is. Good question. OK. So any other questions about the, the new look or setting those toggles? The only thing I would add, Anna, is if you're using the new look, the KDE reports, all of our under Kentucky State reporting KDE reports, right now we do not have the ability to push a link out to those reports under the new look. Campus has assured us, assured us that they will not make this the only look until we're able to do that. Um, each district can go in and use the custom tool placement tool to add those reports so people can get to them for the new look, but we can't publish them from state edition. So if you've got teachers that use um, reports, they'll still have to switch back to the traditional look 
or old look or whatever you want to call it um, to use those KDE reports for now, unless you've gone in and taken the time and placed them somewhere they can get to in the new look. All right, and since she mentioned it, I'm going to just point it out to you so that you'll know uh, if you want to take a look at this. It is a new, this is a was a new feature uh, that came along with the new look. It's called the custom tool placement. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show it, but I don't know if I can get logged back in. It's not liking me jumping back and forth here, apparently. And they also asked why data health check would not be in the new look. Is it just they haven't gotten there yet? I, they just haven't gotten. That's what I mean. There's a few things that just haven't gotten there yet. Eventually, of course, all of it will be there. So I don't know if that's one that's coming in this newest update, but I know there's a bunch of things that they fixed that will be coming out in that August update. So everything will eventually be there. There were just those few little things and that I know people are using. So. Um, in your system admin custom tools, there is this custom tool placement editor. And there's really good documentation on this on the community, but this is what Lisa is referring to. So you can take and push out um, tools to the new look uh, through this. So I would encourage you just to take a look at that. And that would be a way, if you are having your teachers go to the new look to get the, and they need those custom reports, that would give them a way to get to them. So you can certainly take a look at that and there's plenty of resources, videos and things about that on the community. So I thought I'd point that out since it was mentioned. All right, I'll go back once again. I'm only logged in so many times here. Okay. So I'll move then if there's no other questions along those lines. Uh, we'll jump back here actually to my PowerPoint. So let me go back. Okay. Anna? Yes? Nine people have bumped up um, a, a statement that they think the confusion was the whole explanation of the control center was not shown. Um, and that's since you've been showing the screen. So maybe can you go back to the beginning where you were just saying the difference between the control center, you, you were talking about how to change some things in the very beginning when we weren't seeing your screen. Hey Lisa, let's let, let's let Anna get through her presentation okay. and then let's go to the questions at the end. So to make sure that we've got time for her to go through the presentation, okay? okay. All right. All right, and I did Thank repeat you. that, but I'm happy to repeat it again. I, I know I wasn't sharing there at the beginning, but I did I did go back. So I, I can certainly circle back if, if there's still questions on that. All right, so um, the the um, assignment updates, that was the other thing, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, let's see, assignment updates, let me share this real quick. Okay, so there were some, a few things that have been added to assignment. Some of these were a big enhancement requests that I know as a trainer I've been hearing uh, for a long time. Um, that you couldn't do. One of the big ones is being able to add an uh, whoops, being able to add an assignment to a section group. You know, if you previously, if you created a section group for your section where you combine several sections together, you could not add the assignment to the group all at once. You had to go, you had to go back and you know just copy the assignment to sections. So we have added that. Uh, you can now apply assignment updates across all sections. So if you, when you created an assignment, you could always attach it to multiple sections. But now if you go back and update an assignment, you can apply those updates all at once as well. There are also some default scoring options in categories. And this is a really awesome feature been asked for for a long time uh, that allows the teachers to set some default options so they're not having to change. And that's going to be really helpful if you have a very specific grading setup that you can help them know what they need to set as their default so there's no confusion with those grading setups. And then also uh, copying and duplicating assignments. Uh, those features have changed a little bit as well. So let's take a look at those items. So I'm going to go into the grade book. <laughs> and with the new look turned on uh, to minimize my menu, there is a uh, menu bar up here in the upper left hand corner. And I am showing Infinite Campus again, so if that's not what's up, please let me know. So up in the upper left hand corner by the Infinite Campus logo, 
there is this little menu bar and that'll open and close the menu in the new look. Also in the new look, you will see the favorites option so teachers can favorite things and that's what makes them show up then in their favorites menu here if they favorited something and then they can also uh, rearrange the order and, and this is true for everyone. This is just a new look feature uh, whether you're instruction or on the admin side. Okay, so I'm in a teacher grade book and the first thing I want to show you is how to apply assignment updates across all sections. So I have a, this teacher teaches three sections of English and I have an assignment here that has been created previously. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into that assignment. <clears throat> and the assignment options have changed a little bit too. So when I click back into an existing assignment, I have an add and edit, and then beside edit, I have duplicate and delete. So they can duplicate an assignment. It used to say copy at the bottom of the assignment. Now. Now you don't even have to go all the way back into the assignment to copy it. You can do it right from here and you can score from here and then you can close for here. Now some of these changes were already there, but just to point out uh, what that looks like. So I'll edit this assignment. And so let's say that I wanted to change the assignment due date. I'm going to give them an extra day um, to get that done. OK, so I'll give them a few extra days here. So I've just uh, updated whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, so it started on the 15th and I'm going to update that assignment end date to the 23rd and then I'm going to go ahead and I can click add sections to add additional sections to this but if I just click save then it will ask me do you want to update other copies of that assignment so it knows when I created this assignment I had applied that same assignment to all three sections that I teach. So it's wanting to know, do you want to update this assignment for these other sections at the same time? So I can say yes, update the selected, or I can skip the copies, or I could even just say only for this section, I would like to update it. So then I can click update selected and it will update the assignment just in the sections that I indicated. So I indicated to update it in this other section here. So if I go to that section, and take a look, I'll see the due date did change to 723. So that's a nice feature that they don't have to go into each assignment if it applies to everything. Any questions about that one before I move on? All right. Then the other option was being able to add an assignment to a section group. So if your teachers have created section groups, they will see them here in the section drop down. Now that's in the, the creating a section group is not a new feature. That's been here for quite a while. But just to remind you where that's at in case it's not being used, in the settings part of the gradebook, there is the section groups tool. And when you click there, you can create a section group. So I've created one already called English 11. And I've identified what sections I want to be a part of this English 11 section group. I can also give them a different color so that when I'm looking in my gradebook, I can see a different color. I can sequence them so that they show up in the order I want them to. Maybe I wanted to change that order. I could have done that. And then I can add as many different section groups as I need if I want to do other things. All right, so when I have my section groups created, so here's my section group for English 11. Now you can see that color coding, here's one section and then here's the other section. So that allows me, it basically puts both of them in the grade book together. So it allows me to see both rosters of students, but the color coding identifies them. And there's nothing else that separates them. So I would encourage if teachers are using the section groups, they'll probably want to put that color coding on so that they uh, we'll know. And if I wanted this section to show first, even though it's not the first period I have, but I could have sequenced it so that it shows differently. Once I have a section group created, I select that section group here. So instead of selecting each individual section, I'm selecting the group and then I can click add an assignment. You previously could not do that, could not even click add. It wouldn't let you. So now I can add an assignment be added to both of those sections within this group. 
So I'm just going to make this one due tomorrow. Okay, and then I'll just save it. Okay, and now if I look, I have that assignment added here to both of these within that section group. If I went to each individual section, I would still see the assignment on each individual section. Okay. So that's that's big. If you if you have teachers using those section groups or maybe they wanted to, but they weren't because they couldn't add assignments, that is a, a really big thing that they now have the ability to do. Any questions about either of the assignment options? Or we can hold them till the end, but if there's anything that you want me to show right now, I can do that. All right, the next thing then I wanted to show is under settings. If I go into my settings and I go to my categories, so I'm the teacher, I have these categories set up. What is new, all of these options were always here all the way over to here. Now we have default scoring type. So if they always score on points, it will default to that so they don't have to change it. If you're doing standards based and they always score on rubrics, then that's a big thing that may help with the grading to keep things from getting confused. So they can default that. They can also default points. So let's say that the majority of their assignments are 10 point based assignments, or maybe they're doing a 4321 kind of thing or maybe it's 100, whatever it may be, it will default to that each and every time they go to create an assignment. And then they can also set that default multiplier if they want these assignments to weigh heavier than others. So that, that is also an option. But I'll set the default scoring and the default, default points so you can see how that would work and you can apply it to all sections or individual sections. And I can do the same thing for each of my categories. Okay, and I'll just say that one is the way that's going to be. And maybe I do something different in one section, then you have that option as well. So once you have that set in your categories, when you go to create a new assignment, okay, so I've created a new assignment, and notice that when I come down here, it's automatically defaulted to the points and to the, um, let's see, what was the other thing I defaulted? Yeah, yeah, the scoring type of points and the number of points, sorry, lost my train of thought again. All right, so it defaulted to all that. Of course, the teacher can change it at this point if they needed to, but that allows, allows them not to have to do that every single time. Okay, all right, so that is the categories option. And that again is in their settings, under their categories, and just being able to set these three default options. And I also believe, I'm gonna double check something here. On the admin side, if you are setting, I wanna make sure you can do this on the admin side because I don't think I double checked that. If you are setting your categories at the course level, which is something you've been able to do for a while as well. If you set them here, I just want to make sure, yeah, you don't have those default options here. It's just on the teacher side. So if you were setting your, or if you are setting your categories at the course level, then you would want to still give the teachers the ability to edit the categories if you want them to be able to set those defaults. So I know a lot of times when we're setting up things here at the course level, like the calc, grade calc options, the categories, we, we may be locking that down where they can't change them. So just keep in mind with the categories, with those new options, that you would have to give them the ability to edit categories in order to be able to set those defaults. Or maybe turn it on, let them set it, and then turn it off, but you would have to allow that. Okay, any questions on the category option. All right. If not, then the last one, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but let me go back to the grade book. I can go to any of my assignments, and when I click on the assignment, it brings up this assignment 
uh, editor basically. And I have the edit option, like I pointed out, but here I also have the option to duplicate an assignment. So it makes a copy. It allows me to identify uh, which sections I want that applied to. If I want to add additional sections, I can. So I, the one that I, or any of them that I don't have currently applied to it, it will show here as an option. So I can add that section. There is an add all option. I can remove them. So I have several options there. Click OK. And then when I get here, because I'm making a copy, I get a um, screen to review and make sure that's what I want to do. So it's letting me know I'm adding a new assignment. Do I want it to be visible to the class yet? So I have that choice here for each of those. So maybe I do want it to be here, but not here. I can give different due dates and end dates if I want. So maybe I'm starting this one at a different time and ending it at a different time. So I can set custom dates. I can also identify the students I'm assigning it to and then um, the points. So maybe, you know, maybe here this is a different number of points. You can see how it also defaulted based on my settings that I have. So I can edit each section. I've made a copy, I've applied it to all these sections, but then I've edited those individual section settings. I click OK and save. And there is also a preview option you can see there as well. That's not new, just reminding. All right. And so now I have those uh, applied. So with this section, it's a 50 point assignment. If I go to the English Honors class, the assignment is there, but it's a 100 point assignment. I go to English 11, it's there with a little bit different due date and it's a 100 point assignment, okay? All right, so that is that will cover all of the updates that occurred in the Campus 2128 version uh, in regards to the uh, teacher side of things. In the PowerPoint that I believe was uh, shared with you, I did include some resources it, uh, for that for all of those items that I've discussed. So there is a presentation for each of those. And so are there questions at this time? Yes, Anna, there are some questions. And we tried to hold them because I want to make sure that you got through all your presentations first. So yeah, they're absolutely. kind of be kind of mixed around. So I'll start at the bottom just because it's probably the most recent stuff you've covered and probably okay. some quick answers. So, the first one is there a default setting in the admin section to set the scoring type points and multiplier to apply to all sections for the entire district? And the answer is no. On the And that was what I showed on the admin side. You can still apply the categories, but that's why I said you would have to allow the teachers to edit because the default options are only available for the teachers. Okay, thank you. And so you just covered, is there training on the community regarding section groups and copying assignments our teachers can reference? And you've sent some links out. We appreciate that with the materials. And uh, and there was a question about whether this, whether this uh, would be recorded. And we are recording these sessions today, and they'll be available on uh, the KDE Media Portal archives. And maybe tomorrow, but give us till Wednesday just to make sure we get time. I mean, give us till Monday to make sure we have time. Uh, and then... Uh, will this still work of appointing, uh, importing assignments and grades from Google Classroom? Um, so when you, that's a great question. Let me think about that. So when you import grades and assignments from Google Classroom, they become a part of the Campus Gradebook. So I, I haven't tested that specifically, but just based on my knowledge of how that works with everything else, I would say yes, but that's something we would have to test and specifically get an answer for. But I, I'm thinking yes, but I'm not going to say 100% on that. And we and we do archive all these questions and and we create a Q&A document. So we'll reach out to you for confirmation on that before we post anything okay. as an answer Perfect. on that one. Perfect. Um, and then will teachers be able to copy assignments from year to year? Oh yes, they've always been able to do that. So let me go back into the grade book. <clears throat> now you do have to turn on that, uh, there's a tool right uh, for it of course, but under um, settings, it's under the curriculum copier. So if you go to curriculum copier, they can choose what year. This has always been available. The look of it has changed a little bit, but this has been available for 
as long as I can remember, actually, for a few years, a couple of years at least, we've been around a while. But yes, they can copy from year to year using the curriculum copier. Great, thank you. So will the new look include advanced searching on courses? If it, if it is, they currently haven't been able to find it. Yeah, so that's one of the issues with the new look um, is the searches. And my understanding is, is in that August update, there are significant changes to the searches. Currently, the uh, student information area was the only, or the student search was the only search that has the advanced search. And the other areas, course section, people, um, households, none of those areas had the advanced search. But my understanding is that is being corrected and will be in that August release. So their August release, just so everybody's clear, Infinite Campus has an August release that Kentucky won't take until September. Right. Because schools start in August, we often to take um, a release early and then leave us a month and then the next release we'll see, which we always delay uh, a little bit before we take a release. So just to make sure there's any bugs, somebody else works them out, how about that? And um, just let me tag okay. on to that. I was I brought up the community here, so you all would have access to those release notes. And I did notice that the release, uh, just as of today, actually, that wasn't here a couple of days ago, the release 2132 notes are out here. And I actually haven't looked at it in detail myself either, but I was told this is where they were. So I'm going to take a look here. Um, and they may not all be here yet, but this would tell us what's happening in that new release. So I don't see that specifically here, but this does not also look like a complete list yet either. So watch these release notes and that'll give you an idea. And I know the KDE gives you an update too of what's coming, but that would be a way you can kind of keep an eye on it as well uh, with the, those release notes. Perfect. So uh, another question, is there a way to find out who all is currently using the new looking campus instruction? No, there is not. Not that I'm aware of. I don't know if that's something you can see in the database or not, but I know there's not any way on the front end for you to see who's using the new look. Um, and we just had that you know, pop up here. If you do have questions you want to ask, we still have some more time. So it is app.gosoapbox.com and the access code is KDE data. We did have uh, quite a few comments and raised up even after you said you'd already shown it. And, and I kind of stopped Lisa from asking you to go back over the control center again because I want to make sure you got through. But because that's been buffed up by 12 people, let's, um, go, if you can, go back over the explanation of the control center again, show, okay. showing it. So yeah, absolutely. it's a lot to take in. And it, and it, was, and it is still early, too. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. And that, no problem. I don't mind going back over it. It is a lot. So why don't I, um, let me back out here just a little bit. So hold on just a second. I'm actually going to log all the way off and log back in. And I've turned off the new look. So let me bring a little bit smaller here. Okay. So this is, oh, whoop, hit the wrong button. This is where we started at. Okay. Log in as a teacher. This, this is the old, so first of all, the control center, so we got two different new look things going on here. The control center previously had a toggle up here in the upper right where the teacher could turn on or off the new look of the control. So we got two separate things we're talking about here. The control center toggle is gone. That we have turned on completely now to the new look of the control center. So this is the control for teachers. center. For teachers, right? Yes, for teachers. Teachers are the only ones that get the control center. And this is the teacher's new look. They no longer can toggle between the new and old look of the control center specifically. Of course, this is the first thing that pops up for them when they log in. So that's that's one thing, and that is no longer a toggle. But the new look of campus with all of our new navigation and all of the enhancements that we've added in that in behind the scenes navigation, that is a separate thing that is still available to toggle. Now you do have to have that turned on in the system preferences. So under system admin preferences, system preferences, as I showed earlier, you do have to click there and say whether you want all users, instruction users or no users to have the toggle to the new look. When I come in as this teacher, I know they're in the old look because they see the little hat, they see instruction, 
they have to click the little icon here to go back to campus tools. Currently, this is what they have to do if they have anything under student information or any other areas, behavior, whatever the case may be, they have to toggle back and forth. Once they have turned on the new look, they will no longer have to do this. So if I go up to the person icon in the upper right hand corner and I click try new look, and again, this will only be here if you've turned it on in system preferences and you've turned it on for either all users or for campus instruction users only. So if I if the teacher clicks try the new look and they will each individually have to do this, then it takes away that instruction icon where I have to toggle back and forth. Now I see instruction. Here's all my instruction tools. It's this nice flyout win window and here's my student information tools and anything else I have access to. There is also a switch here um, by the main menu. This will allow you to turn this into the tree view look. I think that a lot of this was just to kind of ease you into this new flyout menu idea, but if they like that scrolling up and down of the tree view, then they still do have that option. I will also tell you that your screen size will dictate this as well. And just to demonstrate here, I have the flyouts turned on right now where I get these nice little flyouts that I've gotten used to, but it was different in the beginning. But if I change my screen size too much, notice it makes it go automatically to the tree view. So the resolution of their screen and the screen size will determine what that menu looks like. And that's something you need to be aware of as you're supporting. So very commonly, people will end up in this view and just know they're going to have to scroll up and down. They're not going to see it the same way you might be seeing it in that flyout menu. So that's a common common issue that we're seeing with, with this is just that, that little navigational piece. That is the difference I'm talking about. This just gives them a different menu, basically the way they're viewing their menu and it puts all their tools together by having the new look of campus turned on. Again, very separate from the new look of the control center that has now been forced on. Okay, does that help? I hope so. All right. <laughs> Are there any? Uh, and I think it, this is a good thing. All this is recorded, and there are lots of resources because it may be something people have to watch more than one time. There is another question about how are teachers given access to previous years? Is this a read-only option to previous years? Okay, so the way you give teachers, at, if you need, so let me ask for the context of that question. Are we talking about being able to copy the assignment? because that they don't need access to a previous year to be able to copy assignments. They automatically are able to do that, to copy their own assignments. So are we talking about that or are we talking about just giving them access to previous years for student data? Well, let's cover the second one just because you already covered the first. That way we've got it clear. I don't have any additional context beyond what I read. Okay, so just to clarify, for teachers to be able to copy assignments from year to year with that curriculum copier, you do not have to give them access to previous years. The teacher I was logged in as only has the current year um, access. Uh, access to, to the school year is given through your groups. I do know from working with many districts in Kentucky that some of you are using our the way our model that we recommend, and then some of you may be using a little bit different model. But the the bottom line is is that the way they get access to their to the year is through the calendar rights. So typically we'll see calendar right groups, some for the current year for each school, one for the past years for each school, and then one for future years for each school. So if you're still using this model, you may see the plus, the minus, and the zeros, which is typically what we set up if it hasn't been changed to something else. And then the calendar rights is where you would determine what year they have access to. So right now, all my teachers are attached to the current calendar for whatever school they work at. So the teacher I was in, he works at uh, Harrison High. He only had access to the current year. However, I could still let him copy assignments. If I want to give teachers access to a previous year, then I would give them my previous year's calendar group, which would then contain each of my previous years. So each year, 2021 hasn't been added here yet. And it should be read only, I would think in most cases, uh, which these other two weren't because they are still set to modify. 
but this is what I would typically expect to see. And then whoever you have attached to this past year's group would have access to this. So if you want teachers to see past year data for students, like their grades, their attendance, whatever, it's uncommon. But if you wanted to see that, you would just need to attach your teacher to whatever calendar right group you have that contains the past years. And then whoever is a member of that group, all of these people would be able to access the three years that I saw here. So 18, 19, 19, 20, and 2021, but I'm giving them read only access so they can't change anything. So that would be if you want them to have access to data, but that's totally separate from being able to copy assignments. They can do that without this. Hopefully that clarifies that. Anything else? The original question was about copy assessments, but the additional detail is always helpful. I have uh, just one more question, and uh, here I am administrator and teach one class. When I tried new look for gradebook, is it false as a look to the admin side to the new look? Is it all or nothing if you toggle on the new look under the person icon? I don't like the new look for admin side stuff. Yeah, so that is true. When you, so I'm in as an admin right now. Um, if I turn on the new look, it turns it on for whatever I have tool rights to. So it does, it's it's one turn on. But if you like it for instruction, it is something you can toggle back and forth if you want to do that. Uh, if you don't like it for the admin side, I would encourage you to look in September once those updates are done and see if you like it better, because I think there are some changes coming that will help with some of those frustrations that we've had. Uh, but again, it will eventually be what we have. But yes, you when you turn it on, you're turning it on for whatever tools you have access to. Right, and, and for all the users out there, State Edition has not converted anything to the new look. So when we're helping you or providing assistance uh, at, from KDE level to uh, your level, we're not gonna be as familiar with you as you are with the new look. So it'll be us trying to get a feel for what you're seeing versus what we're seeing. So bear with us until uh, everything transitions, which may be a little while before state edition. I think it's one of the last things that transition. So I do have uh, my ATC and satellite school are on different grading with nine weeks and six weeks. Is there an option to make both nine weeks or both six weeks? My ATC and satellite school are on different grading. So, the grading is specific to, I'm not sure I'm understanding the question, but the, the grading is specific to the courses. I, I mean, we'd think a school too, but within a school, I could have different grading setups across courses. So my simple answer to that question would be yes, but I'm not sure I have full context there. Well, this is Lisa, so I, on, on the yeah, ATCs, the ATCs control what their grading windows are. Um, you can't make it them change them to what you want them to be or another satellite school. However, the KTS data exchange for grades does some magic on looking at dates. So as the assignments come back into your high school or middle school, if you've got middle school kids attending, they, it looks at the dates of your term grades and places the 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 final grade or the um, posted grade back into your term at the same time because the ATC may be serving different schools that have different grading periods. So we made that kind of this fuzzy thing that it changes where the grade goes in your school to match what your your terms are set to if that makes sense. And that's a good question for Tanya Fluke, who kind of manages that KTS data exchange too. You know, so you might want to reach out to her with additional questions on, on that too. Okay, Lisa, did you have anything else you wanted to clarify or questions you wanted to ask? We've got about six minutes left before our next session. Yeah, I got a clarification on the Google Classroom question. And it was, if I create assignments in Infinite Campus, will they show up in Google? And from what my understanding is, you should be using one or the other. You shouldn't try to create assignments in Infinite Campus if you're using Google Classroom. If you're, if you're using a one roster connection, they expect everything to be coming in from that one roster. And it gets really confused when you start doing both. Is okay. that 
Let me clarify something on that. That's not the way I understood the original question. And just to clarify that nothing goes, no assignments from campus will go to Google Classroom. It's only from right. Google Classroom to campus. So I just wanted to make, and that was not what I had understood the original question to be. So I just wanted to clarify that. I emailed her. Yeah, the Google further. <laughs> yeah, but my connection with uh, Google Classroom is really about bringing back the grades and things like that. It's not, and, and, and that way you can still take advantage of a parent portal and student portal and things like that. But um, Anna's right that there's no expectations or no intent that you'd want to be doing something two times as far as setup and course, course content, I should say. Anything else, Lisa? Uh, not that I can think of at the moment. Okay. so. We've got just about four minutes. Anna, anything else you want to just, you know, maybe reiterate something that you've had questions come up um, that are, are commonly asked that might help the uh, Kentucky group? Um, I, I can't really think of anything along those lines. The only thing I might add, I was thinking here is just to uh, reiterate in the knowledge base, uh, just in case you're not aware of these resources, especially where campus instruction is concerned. The, we have these study guides. This is a, a newish feature of the knowledge base, maybe in the last year, year and a half or so. So there is within, and I didn't include these in the resources, so I just wanted to point it out. There is a campus instruction. And if you have campus learning, um, well, I thought there was one for learning here. I guess not. Uh, campus instruction, though, is here. And there is a getting started study guide, a grade book basic. Uh, yeah, here's campus learning. I know it was somewhere. Advanced grade book and posting grades. And then here's a campus learning study guide if you are utilizing campus learning, especially if you're utilizing it fully, not just for the Google Classroom connection. Um, this would give them more details of all the features that are available there within that LMS. Um, so these are great especially if you have new teachers, new staff coming in. This is a great way to get them uh, started with just using the tools in general. And so there, it's broken down. If you haven't seen these, it's broken down in order by topic. And then here is the new control center. Uh, well, I mean, the, the current control center. And it goes through all of the options within the control center. There's documentation. There's, I don't know why it keeps doing that. There's documentation. There's videos um, for all the different things that are available. Now, this engagement check-in is actually part of campus learning. So if you have that, that's, a, that's actually a really cool tool that's available as part of campus learning. So if you are utilizing that. And I, does everyone still have campus learning? I couldn't remember if that was ongoing. I knew they had it last year, but do they still have it for this year? Yeah, uh, Kentucky subsidizing uh, campus learning for all districts through this year, and we are in the still working through the process to uh, extend that support for at least two more years. I can't okay. say it's a done deal right. yet, but I, I, it's much closer than it has been. How about that? So that's good to know because I, I didn't get into any campus learning pieces, but um, there are a ton of features within campus learning if you're using Google Classroom, then you most likely are using that for the LMS features, and that's fine. But if you want to start to kind of explore what's available within and what's available within campus, um, and not have to have that Google Classroom connection, or you know, utilize a little of both, maybe uh, there are many options there. This engagement check-in is kind of cool, but anyway, this the study guides has everything that a teacher might need to know especially new teachers or just a refreshment um, there and all the tools are covered here uh, within these. So I wanted to mention those. Those are on the knowledge base within the campus community. And when you first go into the knowledge base, they are right underneath the, the search bar. They're right here every single time. And you can just click. Actually, it's right here. I didn't see it was in that mini list or you can click see more to see them all. But for those of you that are admins, this is a great place to start any of your new employees. There's attendance, census, grading, behavior. So if you haven't utilized these, these are a great option um, to, to get your new employees in there. If you're a Campus Passport member, then you have access to all of our on-demand content. 
that also covers a lot of these topics, but you have a trainer going through it. So a couple of good resources there as you start the new year with um, just basic topics. And it can show how to get to campus community if you don't know how to. Sure. So if you're in the product, and I'm in a training site right now, so it won't actually work, but if you're in your product, you can just go up to your app switcher and I'll go back to the old look. Just It's the same thing, but just so you can kind of see it. So if I'm in the old look or the new look, there's still the app switcher and you go there and go to community. So it's still in the same place. When you click community, if you have an account and it's been connected, it's going to bring you right here to campus community. If someone clicks on that, like a new employee or someone that's just never been there, when they click on it, it's going to bring them to a screen similar to this. It'll actually be reversed uh, on the left hand side. It'll have, do you want to get a campus ID? And they can actually walk through the steps of getting that campus ID. Otherwise, they can log in if they created an account previously. And then it connects it with campus. So then once you get in, you don't have to toggle back and forth. Um, you're just you're just in there as a single sign on. And Campus Passport works the same way. Once you're in Campus Community, if you go to Campus Passport, which is where all our training materials are, that all becomes a single sign-on. So I now have Passport Community and Infinite Campus all connected together, and I can get to all the resources from right here within Campus. And teachers would access the study guides in this exact same way, right? Yep, absolutely. So just get them to right. community and then go to the knowledge base. And of course, you could send the links as well uh, to these. But once they are in community, just go to the knowledge base. And then there are all the study guides here. Great, thank you. All right, well, we're, we're finished with this. We went, actually went a couple minutes over. I apologize, Meredith. Uh, I snuck off on me. Appreciate uh, you joining us today, Anna. And uh, we're going to thank you and go move on to our next uh, presentation. So appreciate all the information you provided. Bye. Bye everyone.